It's one of the most challenging spot and stalk quests that you can undertake. When we scheduled this hunt, we determined that it was going to be all about the adventure. We just talked to James on the phone. Uh, they were out scouting for the evening and they're on their way in here. And uh, we're just gonna unpack, get a couple tuning shots in and we're gonna get ready for the morning. After arriving and setting up camp in their cozy cottage and making sure our bows were still dialed in, we came up with a tactic. Mornings, our plan is to hunt from a blind using decoys and if that didn't work out, spot and stalk, or at least spot and set up on travel pathways waiting to ambush, all while trying to capture on camera. With some of the best eyesight on earth, living in some of the flattest terrain, we knew that we were going to be in for a roller coaster of a ride. Cimarron Valley Outfitters hunt multiple Western states, Colorado, Texas, and Kansas for multiple big game species. We chose this hunt and was recommended the outfitter from Infinity Hunts, designed to help hunters choose high quality outfitters from a list of outfitters a mile long. All right, morning one, we're getting ready to head out to the blind here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna, the idea is to hunt over decoy. So they're gonna be coming in, checking it out, and we gotta range, take the shot, and then get the, get the job done no water it's just going to be blind set up in the grasslands here at the west part of texas bordering uh, colorado so we're going to see what we happens in the blind and we're going to have three different hunters set up three different blinds uh, miles apart and uh, we'll see what we get done today the morning of day one no matter who you are or how many hunts you've been on it always plays with your mind and emotions did i put in enough time do I have the calmness under pressure to make it fly true when it needs to happen? Am I going to be smooth enough and fast enough to be fluid and invisible or shake and stumble and blow out the game? These thoughts go through everyone's mind. Ultimately, we shall see. Just getting everything set up now and uh, picking out the arrow. So we're just gonna see how everything turns out here today. Got the other guys that are out there right now. And uh, got the decoy set out. We're gonna see what happens. See if we can make an opportunity happen. Again, 
then you can shoot till pretty late before it gets dark, but I know Kai's out about four and a half miles away. If you look at Google Maps and Onyx, um, you saw a nice bucket had a shot at a small uh, bucket about 60 yards, but it was waiting for that bigger buck to come in. It didn't go come closer than 100. And then same thing, does out to 325. Then they uh, went out of sight. And Ethan, he's a little further away. Um, as of the, our last communication text, he, he never saw anything yet. So we got uh, three irons in the fire and hopefully someone is able to capitalize on today. If not, we got a long, long time to go. All right, so day one, midday. It's about a little after two. And Dalton picked us up. We're gonna make this big square and then we're gonna be dropped off and we're gonna do a spot and stalk. What are they in right now, Sorghum? No, they're just in some CRP, it's all CRP. Got it, okay. So they're, found our target buck. He's in some CRP, but it's really tall. So we're gonna just try to do some spot and stalk right now. Um, activity they're about 150 yards from where we're going to be dropped off at it's some great footage if you would have been with the, the sun this morning they were pulling they were pulling a show for him there was bucks first light when they all got up a buck ran right across the road in front of me and ran up on them and the main buck in that group chased him off and then that small buck came past his blind and he chased that buck left the group and chased him off they were just back and forth all, all morning. He was chasing those bucks off all those does. Then he was sitting there raking his, he was getting in that cotton and raking his, raking his horns and tearing that cotton up. It was pretty cool. The next part of the plan is kind of cowboy. Glass and spot and stalk, sounds easy. Then determine everything from our topo, crop for concealment, wind, and possible travel. We used everything from decoy antler helmets to our hex suits to belly crawling on earth for literally hours. Whatever we could do, just to stack the pot in our face. I'm gonna walk, as you can see, the topography drops off there. So you can stay here. I just don't want both of us walking up. What this vid doesn't show are all the stalks we lost count, literally, that were so close that resulted in at the time nothing. Mental notes were made of what to do next time, or more importantly, or more accurately, what not to do next time. After countless stalks, it was back to the glass. It's more than an attitude. It's more than a lifestyle. It's a lasting purpose, a commitment to the created human and to knowing that there's more for all of us wanting to fill out life. Man, it's tough to st stalk on those many eyes, man. Gordo, one buck. We got it. not too close, but it just flat out here, so. And you can see the CRP, I mean, it's, I mean, some of it's tall, some of it's only about 18 inches, so, yeah, well, gonna keep at it. Well, hopefully Kai and Ethan are having a great time. I know they're probably not as excited as what we just did, but sometimes archery antelope is tough. I mean, if you've ever been on a rifle antelope, that has the potential to be potentially difficult, let alone if you're doing it with a 80 yard window. Late afternoon on day one. Surprisingly and almost unbelievably, it happened. We spotted a lone buck and a doe crossing a sorghum field and heading into a small water reserve that is held in a track of a center pivot irrigation unit. I set up and waited, heart pounding 
knowing, as you can almost see here, that there's no cover. Mentally knowing that this might be my only chance. I ranged 30 yards, more specifically 28. I pulled back my Matthews V3X, anchored, came to consciousness, and pulled the release. I heard this swacker and 468 grains hit. The goat ran. The doe didn't know what happened. And after about 50 yards, it was over. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you sure? Right here, and, he, and he jumped up. Yeah. He's been, I'm telling you, I've seen it in the spotters. He was leaking bad. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> the beans were so high that I couldn't see it go down or lame. Even after knowing that I hit it, you start questioning. The only reaffirmation was the doe looking around and finally moving on to the next field without her buck. It's lit on the right on the other side of the field. Like maybe two or three yards on the other side. No, you see where the grass is laid down? Yeah. That's where he is right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, baby. Look at that boy. Yep. That was probably you probably clipped his heart. Yeah. My target buck was down. A beautiful Pope and Young antelope taken with what seemed to be immeasurable odds after only one day. We still had two more to go, and this antelope adventure was far from over. Back to the truck, we're gonna see how the other guys are doing. I'm gonna go get the meat done, processed, keep it out, back to camp. So. sitting for the last five or six hours. It's about noon. Guy just came and picked us up. We're gonna do a little bit of spot and stalking since it's kind of slow. So stick with us and see if we can't get something on the ground. Well, we've been doing some driving around and seeing a bunch of bucks. Made a play on a couple. We just It's so flat out here that it's hard to Hard to get on one, but we've got one out in this field. The guy just dropped us off, switched to a crossbow, shooting sticks, and Gannon's got the decoy. We're gonna try to get around here a few rows deep in this corn and try to get him spotted. We're gonna crawl to him and hope that we can get within a, a decent shooting range. So hang tight and we're gonna see what happens.
I thought we had him dead to rights. He was on this two track and he was only about 200 yards. I thought he was gonna turn around and walk right up that way, but he didn't, he took off. So back at it again. It's more than an attitude. It's more than a lifestyle. It is a lasting purpose, a commitment to the created human, to knowing that there's more, for all of us wanting the full out life. Rugged athlete. Today it's been me and Gannon have sat in a blind all day until about four o'clock and uh, we had to leave because Kai needed this to try and finish off another antelope unsuccessfully so we spotted these goats we've already tried to set up on them once we're gonna take the decoy and the shooting sticks and we're just gonna work down this pivot and try to head them off as they're coming towards this road and see if we can't get within bow range.
did it last night. We're trying to make stuff happen. I'm trying. But that idea was really good. They just didn't come in close enough. You got her. She's going down. Let's go, boys. Let's freaking go, boys. Yes. 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 Dude, last day. It's a doe. We're on doe management. It's ninth inning, and we just made it happen. Yes, sir. Oh. 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 Thank the Lord. And thank Hunter. Good shot, buddy. Awesome. Good shot. 70 what? 71. 71 yards with the Raven with the raven i'm what one for five this week let's go let's go get her <laughs> yes back straps for dinner
done. Four day hunt, took us four days with Cimarron Valley Outfitters, outfitter and guide, hunter, and we were in the fourth quarter for this. So the archery success rate in the state is less than 12%. It averages between 10 to 12 percent and uh, three archery hunters 100 percent tagged out so very thankful awesome time <laughs>